All right, cleaner, more fuel-efficient cars and trucks. That is the idea behind the new vehicle standards just announced by President Obama. Joining us now to drill down on what this means for you and for the industry, Lauren Fix. Where are you, Lauren? Let me see Lauren, the car coach. She is there. She is a nationally recognized expert on the auto industry, and she's joining us from Austin, Texas. Neil Bodet is the Detroit bureau chief for the Wall Street Journal, and he is joining us from... Ann Arbor, Michigan, and in New York, Peter Valdez de Pena, who was with us just a moment ago, senior writer for CNNMoney.com. And boy, let me let me start with uh, any, meeny, miny, mo. Neil, let me start with you. These uh, tougher standards as a national security argument, breaking our dependency on foreign oil. Do you buy it? Well, yeah, sure. I think people have been talking that, about that for several years, that we import a lot of foreign oil. We import this foreign oil from places like the Middle East that are, uh, give us trouble. And if we can reduce our, our oil imports, that's a good thing. Um, but the, in the grand scale of uh, things, the improving fuel economy for cars is only one piece of what you need to do for reducing imports of foreign oil. So it's got to be coupled with a whole comprehensive uh, energy policy, not just an, an auto industry policy. Wow, Lauren, it makes it a little more difficult to, to argue I need my big uh, <laughs> SUV when the president is framing this choice as a national security decision. Well, I don't know about a national security decision. Yes, we all want better fuel economy, less greenhouse gases, and lower prices of gasoline. Who's going to say no to that? Yeah. I don't think there is anybody out there who wants it. However, there is always a cost, and then there's those underlying costs. It's going to cost consumers, and I has calculated about $1,300 more per car. Yeah. That's a lot more than the $600 that, that they've been stating in the well, past. Well, the president says it pays for itself uh, in three years. I was figuring that out as quick as I could if gas stays about $2 and change per gallon. But they're talking about possibly, and they've been talking about this for years, putting an extra tax on gasoline. If they bring it up to $5 a gallon, we're all going to be forced to get better fuel economy cars. And they're going to be deciding what cars we're going to buy next. I'm really concerned when the government starts getting too deep into the auto industry. I think it's a great agreement that they've got everyone working together, all the manufacturers yeah. in the UAW. But when consumers are going to be told, you know, price of gas is probably going to go up, so you're probably going to have to buy this. The bigger thing is that there's about $1.4 billion in expenses for all this R&D to make this happen by the deadline to make 35 miles to the gallon. And I don't believe the car industry is that uh, solvent right now, shall we say. Wow. All right, uh, Peter, your body language suggests that you want to jump in here, so go ahead. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot coming on here. I mean, one thing about uh, raising gas prices is it, gonna, it is going to actually help auto manufacturers to reach these goals because auto make auto consumers will become more interested in fuel economy. One challenge with trying to set fuel economy for cars is the consumer response is often, "Hey, the fuel economy on my SUV is actually much better than it used to be. I'm going to go buy that bigger vehicle now because it doesn't cost me the way it used mm -hmm, to." Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like customers just consumers just stay put in the face of this. They change their choices, and if gas prices stay low, the consumer is going to start working against this plan by moving up those yes, more fuel efficient large SUVs, but still. But they're not going to be on the road. I mean, cars. you can see a day. What am I missing here? It seems to me you can see a day when they're not going to be available. Yeah, buy them now, hang on to them forever. But the 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 industry is being reshaped. You're, am I wrong here, Neil, uh, Lauren? Well, well I, I'm, I'm really concerned because are not going to go away completely because uh, th there are people who, who need SUVs and will continue to buy them. Um, I think the real key to making this whole thing work is gas prices. And uh, the administration is, is basing this on an estimate that gasoline will cost $3.50 by 2016. Mm -hmm. And people around the industry uh, will tell you that they think $4 a gallon is a good place to start for ha how much gas should cost if you want to get people to buy small fuel efficient cars i would bet that down the road once we're beyond uh, this recession that there is some talk about uh, a uh, increasing gas taxes oh. um, to help make it more palatable for for consumers to buy these cars go ahead lauren 
Okay, yeah, I, I'm all fired up here because I know how you can save on greenhouse gases and fuel economy today, and that's what I've been saying for the last 20 years, and that is do your basic maintenance on your car. I could sell you a car that gets 35 miles to the gallon, but if you're not going to change the oil, check the tire pressure, or even bother taking it to a technician, then you're act it's, it's, there's $62 billion in undone maintenance, and that's really affected greenhouse gases. That's why I'm against this cash for clunkers law. There is so much going on that consumers don't want to put their efforts in. They want a car they can drive that doesn't have to be maintained. You want to improve your fuel economy? Do your basic maintenance. I mean, that, that's pretty obvious. And if people did that, like President Obama had actually said during his campaign, people maybe thought that was a joke, but you can actually help greenhouse gases improve your fuel economy and get more out of your vehicle. But it's not enough. The president is not suggesting enough. here that, it, Peter, the, the president is suggesting it's not enough. We need to move more aggressively. A, a, and the real question, I, one of the questions is, is do you believe in the final analysis that that enough lead time is being provided here for this industry to make the changes that are being asked of it well that's um, you know that's a tough question whether that lead time is there one assumes i mean the industry sources that i've talked to they seem to all support this bill they seem to believe they have the technology to do this and remember they don't have to start off at 35.5 yes, miles yes. per gallon right away they can, they can get there over a period of time. And part of this also is that every manufacturer has its own set goal. So a full line manufacturer like a General Motors or a Toyota that does make large trucks and SUVs will be asked a, for a different goal than, for example, a Honda that makes only smaller cars and vehicles. So they each have, there's some flexibility there within that. As long as the total goal adds up to ultimately 35.5 miles per gallon. So there is some flexibility here, and there are some technologies on the way that are going to help the averages out a lot. I mean, Chevy's working on the Chevy Volt. Uh, Ford is working yeah. on an electric Ford Focus. They may not sell a ton of them, but each of those vehicles is going to get fuel Lauren, economy rated in triple digits. Peter, Peter let me shut you down because Lauren is so fired up here, but I got to go. Uh, Neil, let me give you, give you the last word. Anything you want to add to this before we go? Well, I would say that I think the, this is a stretch for the industry, but it's not impossible. They do have six and a half years yeah. to get to 2016 to do this. And, um, you know, it generally takes about three years to develop a new model from scratch. And they have a lot of uh, high, high efficiency vehicles in the pipeline. The Chevy Volt is an electric car that's coming out in about a year or so. So yeah. I think the industry has a shot at doing uh, it. Okay, I can't resist. Lauren, what did you want to say? <laughs> well, I was going to say, we, we all pushed for hydrogen cars, and I tell you what, GM and Ford all did come up with a hydrogen car to test and is being tested, but now we're being told it's being shelved. It's sort of like ethanol gas. Yeah. They have, they have everyone running in every direction. What are we doing? Ethanol? And everyone builds ethanol plants, and now there are ethanol plants that aren't even being used right now. They're just totally dead, and we switched all our fields over to corn. Now we do the same thing with hydrogen. We can't keep changing. We need an energy policy that has a direction and sticks with that all direction. All right. Lauren, appreciate it. Neil, appreciate it. And, and Peter, as always. Thanks for your help.